This is Lev Grossman reporting for Time.com. I recently went to a decommissioned Air Force base outside of Los Angeles in the town of Victorville, where I attended the DARPA Urban Challenge, which is a race for robotic cars. Make sure you're not standing behind the bot. Thank you. The cars that enter the DARPA Urban Challenge are autonomous, which means that they drive themselves. There's no remote control. There's no human behind the wheel. These are cars that think for themselves, and they act accordingly. They have to park, they have to drive, they have to merge with traffic, and they have to obey all of California's traffic laws. The experience of being around these cars is quite startling. Uh, It's very surreal and a tiny bit creepy to see a car driving down the street with nobody behind the wheel. Uh, It brings back memories of Christine, the movie of the Stephen King novel about the possessed vehicle. Now, the way these cars work, uh, basically, the back seat is full of a lot of computers, which are thinking very hard all the time. And you'll notice on the tops of the cars and on the front grills and sometimes on the rear grills, uh, they're sort of encrusted with sensors. Mostly what they're doing is receiving GPS signals. uh, And they're also using something called LIDAR, which is a laser range-finding technology, to figure out uh, what's around them, what's a curb and what's a road and what's a stop sign, what they shouldn't hit, Uh, and where they should go next. One thing you notice uh, at the DARPA Urban Challenge is that the cars don't go very fast. As it turns out, this is not a race of speed. It's really a race about accuracy. The cars, as they move down the street, are thinking very hard. They're trying to interpret the data that's being sent to them from their sensors. The thing about robots is that the stuff that's very easy for us, which is figuring out what's a stop sign, and what's the sky behind it, and what's a tree, It's very hard for robots. Robots could add up a lot of numbers very fast if they wanted to. But when when it comes to driving down the street, they have to work very hard and think very hard. And that's what they're doing when they're moving along at at five miles an hour. One thing you might ask about all this is why DARPA wants a robotic car so badly. And I think the first answer is it would be very useful for the military to have trucks that could drive themselves. That way they could send a convoy across the desert without having any actual people in it. If it was attacked along the way, there would be no danger of fatalities. Of course, the other interested party here is the car companies. In the United States, there are in excess of 40,000 traffic fatalities every year. If the car companies could do something about that, if they could make driving safer with the technology that would assist drivers and keep them out of trouble, they would save lives, and of course, they'd also sell a lot more cars. There's a lot of new technology on display here in Victorville. But it's worth noting that this is also a very new way to develop technology. Ten years ago, DARPA never would have held a competition like this that was open to the public. R&D was much more secretive and much more private. The winner of this year's Urban Challenge was the team from Carnegie Mellon, who brought a Chevy Tahoe named Boss. They collected $2 million. So if you've got a robot in your basement, you might want to think about bringing him out to Victorville in 2008.